the Constitution will not be saved in Washington. Try to have his wing good sell. <clears throat> Turns out the uh, Simpsons and Family Guy did have episodes finally this past weekend. So I watched those after I got back from my run. And so now I was about to uh, do a, a, a different version of the Book of Mormon end of the world <laughs> times for the election day as the Simpsons already beat me to it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, we'll do this one as an update for you on the lawsuit against the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Though I am a bit concerned so, uh, as I uh, think I notified you yesterday <coughs> morning, I submitted an email to Judge Shelby uh, narking on, uh, on uh, Judge Campbell, because if you remember, uh, Let's see, order of recusal, docket text nine, moot, motion for default, okay. Yeah, on uh, Thursday the 29th, when I put in my motion for default judgment, uh, Judge Campbell put an order in, the court will not accept any more filings in this case, while the following motions are pending. <clears throat> and did include the motion for default judgment uh, and so I Monday morning I emailed Judge Shelby about this and so he actually filed the email <laughs> So he overrid Judge Tina Campbell's order, but I'll read it to you. Docket text order after he lodged the documents. So number 28, docket text order. On Thursday, October 29, 2020, Plaintiff Travis Goodsell emailed Chief Judge Robert Shelby's chambers. PDF copies of the motion for default judgment and an accompanying proposed order. Plaintiff appears to have cc'd attorneys for the defendant on the 29 email, October 29 email. The body of that email stated, the plaintiff submits in PDF form attached motion with order to attend at, to the attention of Chief, Chief Judge Roberts Chief Judge Robert J. Shelby because the October 29 email simply submitted the motion and proposed order which were docketed in this case the same day see entry number 25 the court did not lodge the October 29 email in the docket busted Clerks got busted. Today, plaintiff has again emailed Chief Judge Shelby's chambers. This email is substantive. Take that, Judge Campbell. And while its substance appears to reiterate issues discussed in plaintiff's prior filings, plaintiff does not appear to have cc'd anyone else on this email. As stated in the document lodged, number 27, you'll know exactly what I'm referring to. The court therefore lodges the email on the docket. Take that, Judge Campbell. In general, the court cannot and will not receive or engage in one-sided ex parte communications with parties 
such as the November 2nd email. Such communications are nearly always improper. <laughs> yeah, well, so was her. <laughs> Order. <laughs> Plaintiff should communicate with the court via public filings on the docket. Take that, Judge Tina Campbell. <laughs> Plaintiff is directed to stop emailing Chief Judge Shelby's chambers. Signed by Judge Robert J. Shelby on 11 to 20. DIA or DLA. <clears throat> so he's not going to do anything with it. But he did point out that what was done in my case has been done wrong. That the clerk screwed up and Judge o uh, Campbell, Campbell in this case. So many different judges come passing through this case. Judge Campbell also messed up with her order. So he overrid her order. So if I have something more to add, I can just refer to number 28 to uh, override Judge Campbell. So, yeah. But he didn't act on it. He just condemned everybody in my case. But he himself did not do the motion. So, sorry, I did my best to try to save America and the world before the Simpsons end of the world display. <laughs> Just hilarious. Alright. So, a needle pulling thread. Let's uh, upload this for you and then I'll uh, uh, we'll see if I can do the Book of Mormon one I was thinking of doing. It's already 5 o'clock, so I don't know.